Now this gets me truly excited. With Docker, we've always had the ability to be able to um, set up environments within our image and then our containers will run with those versions and those dependencies and it's repeatable. Now VS Code takes it a step further. Now we can actually set up entire development environment um, in, within containers, which means if I want to pass on my code or my project to somebody else, all they need is VS Code, remote containers extension, and they literally fire it up and the entire environment is ready within the container. And the best of all, when you're done, you tear it down and it's all gone again. Now this is really insane. So starting out, I've got an Angular template that I've just used from the Angular site. And um, I've added a .dev container. So this is what you'll need to be able to do remote containers with VS Code. So uh, once, I, once I go in there, you've got two files. The one is the Docker file and the other one is the dev container JSON. So the dev container JSON is basically your configuration saying how should this thing um, be be used or set up remotely and then your docker file defines your environment so um, looking looking first at the docker file so if you think in the past we've written docker files for deployment we would define um, your your environment so for instance with angular it needs node and then might copy the files over do an npm install then do a build and etc so usually that's what the docker file entails but in this case um, we actually using the Docker file to define the environment. So think about development. You you saying that you want Node installed um, if for you to be able to do some Angular development. So this is basically saying, all right, great, pull the Node image, right? So our entire environment will be within a container that we'll be able to run with, develop on, and then tear it down again. So we want the environment to be set up not on your host machine, but in your local, uh, in your container that's running. Then we take a look at the dev container.json. And this is where, where we'll actually see how, how this VS code interprets what it needs to do. So the first thing is we just define a name called Angular Web App. We'll take a look now how it works, but um, then in build, we can define the Docker file. So in this case, we're pointing uh, we're saying the docker file is called docker file. That's the other one we've just looked at uh, with the arguments. We, we didn't really need to do this. Um, if you want to just define which version, for instance, you didn't have to change the docker file, but uh, it's probably a little bit overkill for a demo. Um, you can also define a, an image here from an existing repo. Um, forwarded ports, that's uh, basically saying that the once we're running this container, expose the port uh, 4200, 4200 on the, from the container as well as then on your host machine that you're going to be developing with. And then uh, this is pretty cool. So remember VS Code is it's really nice that it's it's almost like a shell IDE. Um, you get very basic functionality and um, but it comes alive with your extensions. So once again we, we're defining an environment saying if I develop my Angular web app these are the extensions I want installed. So I've got the ESLint, I've got uh, remote containers, which is uh, what we need. And then I've just added a, an Angular specific um, extension for some helper methods in that. Um, so let's, let's see this in action. So let's jump to VS Code. And uh, I've got two instances running. And um, the reason is I just want to show, this is my VS Code installed on the host machine on this VM and um, I've got the following extensions installed on that host. The important one to install is the remote containers and you can see this over here uh, that indicates that it is indeed installed and we can see that here as well under my installed extensions. So just make sure you've got that installed but you'll see um, my, my VS Code's got the PowerShell, Docker, Docker Compose, it's got a couple of extensions here in, installed. Now, I'm just going to jump into a different um, VS Code. So now what I'll do is I'm going to go to this remote containers. Once again, you still see I'm in my 
um, locally installed VS Code with my extensions installed on this host machine. I'm going to clone the repo in a container volume. It's going to give me the option. I'm going to save from my Git repo. I'm already authenticated here, so it's picking up my repos. Which branch? Now, once we give it a second, it's busy. Um, it, it'll be busy pulling the, the files down through Git clone. But not just that, it's also, as you see down here, opening the remote environment. So it detected there's a dev container and it detected our settings file. So it looks at this uh, dev container adjacent and it's busy applying these things. So what it's doing now is it'll It'll run the, the Docker file um, that we defined, which is basically installs Node. So it's busy installing Node. But remember, within the container, not on your host machine. Um, with that version, it's opening up the port when it runs the container, uh, exposing that port. And we're installing a bunch of um, extensions in Visual Studio Code. So let's just have a look. Now it's done. And you'll see over here, it's saying that we're running the environment Angular Web App. And remember that is what we had defined over here. We can also see the, the folders. This is now our source code. And um, we can also just check the container over here. So Angular Web App, that's the environment we're running. Uh, we've run this Docker file and built it. And so now you'll see that we've got Node installed. But remember, not on the host machine, we've only got Node installed within this environment. Um, and we've got all our source files here, so we can make uh, edit it and change it. But even cooler than that, um, you'll see our extensions. Look at this. Locally installed, but those aren't showing here. Um, but th in this dev container Angular web app, which is what we're running, we've got these installed. So now I've basically running my whole development environment within a container and I've set up a whole environment without installing it on my local machine and I can develop, commit and, um, and then break it down again. Let's just run this to prove that it does work indeed. So I can do an NPMI. And while that's running, I just want to mention here, you'll see that we're actually running within a um, that node image. This is this node image is based on a, a Linux distro. So we're running um, our um, our Docker is um, running in, in Linux. So it's not running Windows containers. So you'll see even the terminal that we opened inside here is running as root. Um, on a um, on the in the Linux um, container, so this is obviously the host machine is Windows. So if I go to the other one, um, which is just my normal uh, Windows installation, you'll see it's actually running on um, on Windows, but the container one we're running on Linux. So obviously, if I had built this on um, the, the docker file if we built it on a, a windows container and um, maybe run it on nano server and done the node installation in the docker file ourselves then we could also run that and you'll see something similar to to this and if if i just go over here i just say npm you see that it's not installed on my host machine so i don't have node on this host machine yet i'm able to do an npm i over here because we're running inside the container. There we go. So npm i worked. So let's do an npm start. And uh, npm start, if we look at package JSON, just does an ng serve. So I could have run that too. But uh, let's just see the startup. There we go. Now we see that it's compiled successfully. Let's go to that, um, that link there. And here we go, up and running, look at that. So if I now wanted to make a change, for instance, um, let's add some exclamation marks in the index HTML. You'll see we recompile and um, all our exclamation marks are live. So that's exact same behavior you'd expect if you were running it locally or on your host machine. 
So, and that's because we are still running VS Code um, as if in the same way um, as if it were in a local host or local machine. The only thing is it's running within the container. So within the container, it's still got all the same functionality. We've still got the hot reload. We've still got everything. Um, and VS Code just knows I'm not running on my host. I'm running within the container. That's the only difference. So obviously the terminal will show bash and but even other things. So if, if I wanted to open a new folder, you might might expect uh, wh wh what happens now. So um, if I go open folder. And suddenly you see this is actually um, in context of Linux uh, based file system. You'll see all of these. So VS Code knows I'm running in the container. It sees the file directory from within that container. Um, and it is smart enough to, so for instance, if we go here, this is where our Angular template's running. But we can even switch back and show some of the local file system as well. So VS Code has the knowledge of that it's in, in that remote container and you can switch out again as well. Um, and for instance, I mean, now we've made our changes. Now let's, we can still stage our changes and said add um, exclamation marks and uh, commit the change. And if we then sync, we'll see once we go back to the repo in um, GitHub, we should now see uh, source index HTML add exclamation marks. Um, and there we go. Then just taking a quick look at um, the extensions, for instance, we can once again switch back. We've got all our extensions up and running over here. So just to prove that that is indeed working. Um, and I have the other instance still open there just to show these extensions are on my host. You'll see that is um, the terminal running on my host as well. And this is within the container. So we've got different ones and we've got some extensions installed. So one of them is the, um, the Angular snippet from John Papa. And we want to then, let's say, make use of that. Let's just uh, over here, for instance, let's add a new service. Let's call it hello service naming is hard and over here we should be able to see there's a service HTTP client um, and whoops let's call it hello service and we could create something get world and over here for instance we might say use this and uh, this this isn't so important but um api world so uh, it's a terrible hello world app but um service but the idea is i'm using the extensions that were defined over here and how did those get installed and that once again is if we go back to the file those are installed there so as a development team we might decide what are the extensions that we require and we can standardize on those, define them all in here, and then literally fire up an environment, tear it down again. And uh, let's say we found a new extension um, that we wanted to install. Let's have a look. Uh, I know a, quite a common one is prettier. So what you can do is you can uh, look in here, look at the identifier. Let's do that. Um, and we'll go back to the dev container. We can do this and say, from now on, we want Prettier also installed. And um, so we need to commit this. So we'll add the dev container and we'll just add our hello service as well. As well. Made some changes. Naming should be better than that, guys. Oopsie. <laughs> um, forgot this guy. Right. And... We push it. Um, I didn't really didn't need to do a pull as well, but because I'm the only one making changes. But um, now we can just double check that it is indeed up and running, and pushed it back and made some changes. Here we go. We've got that. So now 
if somebody is uh, using the VS Code, um, for instance, we will see that the, we don't have this installed just yet. And um, this is just one thing that might catch you out. You'll just need to, every once in a while, just say rebuild. Because when we've built up the container, that's when it installs extensions, it sets up, it exposes these ports, it runs the Docker file, sets up these ports. So if there's a change, uh, we'll just need to say rebuild the container. And that looks like it's completed. So let's just double check. If we, if we look over here, look at that, prettier. We've got that installed now as well. And that's it. So now we're able to share um, this and all the other developers now also get that extension. Can fire it up and think about a few use cases. You've got a new developer um, coming. That all they need to do is install Visual Studio Code, install this one extension, remote container, connect via the remote container to the uh, your Git repository. It doesn't have to be GitHub. I've just used GitHub. And um, then we're able to clone the repo. Plus VS Code is smart enough to detect that there is a dev container there. We are running that. So it, it will apply all these settings. It will run the environment based on the image. You can either do a Docker file like I've done, or you can have a, an image that you host in a, a Docker repository. And it applies the entire environment, sets up everything, and you're developing as if you are have everything installed locally. And I mean, this is in the past with with what I've done with Docker is I've I've basically um, I've developed um, some items and run it within a Docker container, and then you've got your yourself some bind bind mounts that you can set up and. Um, and there's a few catches with a hot reload and you get around those with angular um, to simplify it but this really feels like you you've got um, the application installed locally you're developing it your terminal is is correct everything is as if you are have it installed locally but it's only set up within your environment and this is really beautiful now if i want to switch to another environment i can switch it up or pass this to other um, users and um, let's say we had different applications within the organization where some use a different version of node and this this is a great example where that would come in handy because now you you tear it down again load up the different environment you've got a whole different set of uh, configuration which doesn't affect this at all and once i'm done you can just close this again as well and close remote connection and once that's closed, you'll see we've got um, VS Code with all our uh, extensions that are installed on the host itself. And if I go to the terminal, once again, we're back in our, um, our Windows terminal. And just to confirm, there is no node installed on, my, uh, on this host machine. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, uh, my colleague here, uh, Peter Pretorius. So he was the one who showed me this and um, I wanted to give it a go myself. And I was pleasantly surprised uh, how easy it is to set up. So thanks for that. Uh, this, is, this is really a game changer, I feel, um, especially if you're work, working with multiple environments um, and um, you can switch it up easily. And because it's in, in the repository as well, um, for, for those who don't want to do this or have a different IDE, that's fine. We can still, they can still develop as usual. They'll just have another folder called .dev container that, that will be ignored. So if they're running WebStorm or anything else, um, but for anyone who wants to then connect, you can, I mean, you can even do just, just do a git clone with your, um, VS code installed on your local machine and um, develop as usual there's nothing stopping you there if you've got a whole set of extensions that um, aren't defined and you just feel like you've got everything up and running then you're free to do that as well you're not bound to to running this now within the container is this literally just opens up another opportunity for those who want to fire it up start the container and um, well yeah um, create a container from the image and uh, develop and once they're done tear it down again